Thank you for your introduction. I am going to present to you Guy Petri, a concurrency library. Before I present Guy Petri itself, I would like to remind you how a Petrinet works. Here we have a representation of a Petrinet. Circles are called places and rectangles are called transitions. Places can hold an arbitrary number of tokens. A transition can fire when all of its input places have at least one token available. When it fires, it consumes one token from each of its input places and creates one token for each of its output places. In this example, we have a patronet that represents two concurrent processes that are going to use some shared resource and enter a critical section, so they must not enter it at the same time. In order to represent the critical section, we use a place in the middle with a token that represents the shared resource. Process 1 and 2 are in their initial state. The shared resource is available. When process 1 wants to enter its critical section, the transition fires, consuming the shared resource. If process 2 wants to enter its own critical section, it cannot do so because one of the input places doesn't have any token, so the transition cannot fire. Process 1 needs to exit its critical section. Doing so, it releases the shared resource, allowing process 2 to enter its own critical section. Then process 2 exits its critical section, releasing the shared resource. Petronets are useful for concurrency, resource sharing, and they can represent network processes and cooperation. They allow for nice graphical reasoning, and the liveness analysis on Petronets is designable. Guy Petri uses a Petronet representation for concurrency. Instead of tokens, it has data that flows in the Petronet. Instead of places, it has waiting queues where data is waiting to be processed. And instead of transitions, it has functions that process data. For instance, if we have two places with tokens 5 and 7 and a transition plus, then when it fires, it will consume the 5 and 7 and output a 12 in its output place. GuyPetri is available as open source at the URL below, and I'd like to encourage you to test it after this presentation. Of course, GuyPetri is able to handle more complex functions and structures than integers. It allows you to specify a custom filter that accepts or rejects some input combination and these must be fast. It also allows you to define functions through which accepted inputs are run and this one can be slow as it is executed separately from the rest. Concurrency in Guy Petri is based on Guy Fibers, itself inspired by concurrent ML. I would like to show you a short demonstration of Guy Petri running. This is the representation of an echo server. Initially, the listening place is filled with one socket that is listening on a port. When open connection transition fires, it accepts a connection from a client. The transition returns the socket to the listening place and also returns a new socket for the new connection to the connected place. If the socket is connected, the echo transition fires, which reads a message from the client and sends it back to the client. Then it returns the socket to the connected place. If instead the socket is not connected anymore, then the close connection transition fires and the socket is discarded. The client sends hello Petri to the server and will receive the message back. The graphical interface introduces a one second delay per transition to help us notice them. We have run a performance analysis comparing Guy Fibers and Guy Petri. We observe a four times slowdown, which is mostly due to the additional number of short lived fibers per connection. Guy Petri also features an initialization time modification system of the Petronet, which works almost like macros. It can be used to combine with some global state, and it is actually used to show the graphical interface that was shown during the demonstration. In the future, I would like to work on some graphical programming interface that would allow you to change the structure of the Petronet graphically. I would like to work on some static analysis to ensure no deadlock can happen, and I would like to work on performance improvements. Now, I'm happy to answer any of your questions.